clean these stones, get rid of all the pollution on the surfaces, so you can maybe read them or at least uh, retard the damage to the stones. But we've been doing this since April, We're trying to get the township to take it over. But right now, trying to bring it back to life. It's uh, been a real mess. It's been abandoned since last October. The Radnor Historical Society was founded in 1947 by a group of interested people who liked Radnor history and wanted to start to preserve it and showcase it so that others can enjoy it as well. So we have, uh, we've been around quite a long time. And the Radnor Historical Society is housed in a uh, 1789 uh, farmhouse that was Victorianized 100 years later and we were given it in 1964 by Mrs. Miss Dorothy Finley. It's a three-story uh, farmhouse with about an acre of ground in the center of Wayne. I have had an interest myself in this ever since I've moved here in the 50s. And I have taken people on tours of Wayne. There is a wealth of information in this building and I welcome anyone to come here and enjoy what we have here and see the local history. It's fun to come and take a look and see how people lived 100 years ago and more and learn about little bits of Radnor history. The society houses hundreds of artifacts from Radnor life, thousands of photographs, uh, furniture, clothing. We have a huge costume collection, local farm uh, implements, farm wagons. And we've now put in a museum there just recently uh, showcasing implements that were used in the Conestoga wagon era. The mission of the Radnor Historical Society is to preserve, protect, and promote all aspects of Radnor history. Some of the things we have go back to the 1600s, and we keep collecting new things too. I've gotten a 1913 washing machine set that people say, oh, what, what do we have that for? But they don't realize that that's nearly 100 years ago now, and in the future it's gonna be even older. So we have to keep on moving the time bar forward. We get a lot of third graders come to us, uh, they, they come in school buses, and we have uh, four guides usually stationed around the facility. And what we try to do is encourage them to take this information back to their classroom and at home. So their parents and siblings are also uh, learn about Radnor history from, from their uh, trip to us. So this is a major event for them and for us every year. So we really appreciate their coming. Another event we have is the Mystery History Tour, which we started five years ago. And that's where we have different sites around the township. And we have guides speaking about what each building or, or thing is. And we've had 60 to 80 people at each one. And we've learned a lot uh, about uh, doing our research about these different locations. Uh, we've made it a walking tour in the last couple of years so people can park in one place and go from site to site. That makes it much more efficient. One of the things we built here in Radnor a couple of years ago was the Radnor Trail. It's a 2.3 mile trail along the old P&W tracks. And I thought, well, gee, people see these concrete uh, things coming out of the ground. They had no idea what they were. So I said, well, let's develop some signs and showcase uh, what the, the piece of concrete were all about. So we had old postcards and old photographs, and we put them on a enamel signs right where the concrete uh, piers were so they could see these stations and things like that. And it's, uh, we're do, doing 10 all together. We've done two so far, we're doing two next year as money comes in. So it gives people appreciation because a lot of people don't know that what the P&W was all about but with the, the photographs right in front of them, they can read some text and see what they're walking along as if they were there back 50 years ago, which is really nice.
We have other projects as well. In fact, right uh, the last couple of days, we've been restoring the War Memorial, World War I War Memorial in downtown Wayne on South Wayne Avenue. It was very corroded, looked terrible, and the acid rain and other pollutants had uh, really oxidized the bronze. And it was done by a very famous sculptor named R. Tate McKenzie. And so we did some research and uh, we've come up with a, a method to clean and wax the war memorial. So it looks completely different than it did. It's going to take a couple more years to uh, get the, all the old oxidation off. That has also led to another project, which we started about a year and a half ago, is to find information about all the fallen who are memorialized on the plaques at the war memorial, World War I, to Korea and Vietnam. And we're putting up a website which will be attached to the Radnor Historical Society website with pictures and information about each of the uh, heroes who have fallen in our wars. So it's a very rewarding project for us. And we found up in our, one of our cubby holes up in the second floor photographs, frame photographs of most of the World War I vets who, who died. And so it was very exciting. And then just about a month ago, the executive director of the library called up and said she'd found a box with 800 file cards uh, with names of all the veterans, both living and deceased, uh, who had gone from Radnor Township. So we've partnered with the Radnor High School, and so the kids are now documenting and putting into a database every vet in Radnor Township. So we'll have a, a master list and put that on our website as well. Uh, we're here at the Radnor Baptist Cemetery, also known as the First Baptist Cemetery in uh, Wayne. It was abandoned uh, last year. The church that owned the cemetery was disbanded in 1952 and the property was sold. The money went into trust and the trust has run out. So the Radnor Historical Society has taken over the care of it. Uh, we've taken the cemetery, which was overgrown. We had uh, grass that was breast high and we've uh, weed whacked it and mowed it. I've had as many as 25 people here at a time to clean up. We had uh, 19 girls from Villanova University here, the cross-country team, here uh, about a month and a half ago, and they just did wonders to clear out a lot of the overgrowth. We found in our library at the Radnor Historical Club that we have three large books that were the projects that they did. Um, it was historical sites in Delaware County, and also all the cemeteries in 1936 and 7 that they did. And Ted asked me to make indexes of them, and then we cross-referenced them with the burial permits that the bank had given us, Mellon Bank, I believe it was, had given to us for our records, and um, the maps that we had from the WPA. Interesting how these projects unfold in that somebody just showed up, unbeknownst to any of us, and weed whacked the whole place down to about eight inches. It turns out some guys from the Italian American Club across the street saw the volunteers and said, gee, we wondered who maintained it, so we'll go over and help out. And they never told anybody, they just came in and did it, which is great. I am helping clip all the hell out of the tree. Yeah, you're probably a very big helper. Uh, a lot of them now, you you can't read, they're so worn. And I'm excited that today I found George Harrison. I thought he was a Beatle, but he was actually a Civil War veteran. And it doesn't even have a date of death on his stone. But um, he was in the um, Grand Army of the Republic. It says G-A-R on his stone. And he was in the 97th Regiment uh, Infantry during the Civil War. But we've been doing this since April. We're trying to get the township to take it over, but right now, try to bring it back to life. It's uh, been a real mess. It's say, been abandoned since last October, but uh, hasn't really been taken care of properly for years. We have lots of volunteer uh, efforts here. 
People can do all sorts of things from uh, working with the, the uh, veteran graves, make sure they're marked properly, uh, making sure all the graves are found, and we're finding more all the time. We just found one last week and one two weeks before that we didn't know were here except for the clearing of the, all the brush. For any of viewers who are interested in either volunteering or contributing money, we greatly appreciate it. You can mark it to uh, the Radnor Historical Society uh, Cemetery Fund, and we'll put that into a, a brand new cemetery trust that we'd like to establish with one of the local banks. We're uh, greatly involved in historic preservation. It started three years ago this month, uh, October, when one of our board members uh, was walking her dog along Eastern University's campus and, and called me and said, oh, they're doing something at the log cabin. Looks like maybe they will uh, do some work there. And I said, uh-oh, sounds like demolition. And we called the president and found out that they were planning to demolish the uh, cabin in 10 days. So we had an immediate uh, emergency session with them and with a group of people, including the National Trust, and they agreed to not do demolition, but let us investigate the condition because they'd had uh, condition reports that said it was full of bugs and was in uh, danger of collapsing imminently. Well, the, the cabin is very, very strong. The bugs left about 80 years ago, and it's a one of the premier examples of log cabin architecture in the country. Uh, next, next question is, what do you do with it? So we had an architectural firm come in and do a study of the potential uses and costs of the restoration of the cabin. So the next problem is, how do you raise the funds? And that's where we are at this point. Uh, one of the things we're doing right now is the Willows Cottage. The Willows is a mansion uh, that Radnor Township owns one of their major parks. There was a uh, cottage there, the, the gatehouse, that was going to be demolished a year and a half ago. And I was at the meeting with the Board of Commissioners where they were going to authorize some money to tear it down. So I looked at the lady next to me and we shook our heads and said, no, they aren't. And her grandfather was the architect. So we formed a, a group within a week and came up with a plan. We talked to the township. They allowed us to uh, try to save the cottage. We took the water out of the basement, got the downspouts fixed, ripped out old moldy carpets, wiped down the mold, and started preser uh, preserving the, the, uh, the uh, cottage there. Last May, just a little bit more than a year later, we had a hoedown with uh, over 400 people to celebrate the rebirth of the cottage. We also have a community supported agriculture program that we started in the adjoining park. And the stable of the old cottage is now our farm market. And this coming Sunday, we're having a harvest fest to celebrate the first year of harvest there at uh, the cottage, and the, the farm. It's called Skunk Hollow Farm. So it's a really proud moment for all of us to have been able to step to the plate and save a gem of historical architecture. There's a lot of the Civil War here. There's things from the Revolutionary War, also from the World War II. And I think it would be of interest of anyone who is interested in local history. Another historic preservation project we have is the historic plaque program for both build, uh, commercial buildings and houses in Radnor Township. One of the things we're trying to do is discourage demolition and in, inappropriate development in Radnor. And by showcasing the history and the age and the importance of various buildings, we hope to educate the populace, the township, developers, architects, and business owners to the necessity to maintain our historic fabric. And that's why people moved here. That's why they enjoy living in this historic area. But if you keep tearing them down, then suddenly over time, things will disappear and our historic fabric is gone.
I actually, there's a cemetery in Illinois. There's a cemetery in Illinois that a lot of my family's buried in, and I can't get out there to help clean it up. And apparently, people, volunteers like me come and clean it up for me. <laughs> so I show up to as many of these as I can to sort of, you know, I figure I'm doing my part here and someone's doing it out in Illinois. We need volunteers. We have so many programs I've tried to mention that I have a board of 18 and we have a number of people who work with us as well who are not board members. But we have so many projects that need our attention. And so volunteerism for things like photographing our collection, archiving things, being guides, and so forth are much, much needed. So any help that we can get, we try to announce this every chance we get, but there's constant, uh, constant work. We'd like to have somebody come and conserve our costume and textile collection, photograph it and make sure it's housed properly and things like that. We've scanned over 5,000 documents with one volunteer over the last six or seven years. And we have a whole series of volunteers who put numbers on the photographs, pe people put them in sleeves, and then I do the last job of making sure everything's right and putting them back in the filing cabinets. But we're also trying to preserve our fragile documents and things like that. So it's always need for volunteers. I have a, quite a list uh, back at the Historical Society. One of the problems we face at the Historical Society is that we're successful. We have a lovely building. We have a lot of wonderful artifacts there, things like that. But things keep rolling in. So one of my hopes and dreams is to expand the society's building uh, between the, our the Finley House and our Wagon House with an addition. We've had so many people at our meetings sometimes or standing room only, so I need better space for lectures, I need better space for display. Our archive room is stacked up to the, the ceiling with piles of stuff. We just can't keep track of it uh, and organize it properly and take care of it properly. So I need better storage space and room to process things as they come in. But, uh, but we do need uh, maybe about 2,000 uh, more feet of space. And, and coupled with that would come in uh, air conditioning and fire safety for our main building, which we don't have right now. Hello, welcome to the Radnor Historical Society. Come in and see all the treasures that we have here in Wayne, Pennsylvania. My name is Teresa Whiteman, a.k.a. Terry. Thank you very much for coming and come back again.